You got enough. You got enough cameras on. Are you filming yourself? Is that what that is? How do you combine those? I actually was wondering <clears throat> that. You have to upload that. How do I combine those? That. <laughs> Fucking what? editing software, bro. <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> well, first I ship it to a man. <laughs> a man named Ricky. Is that on iPhone? Shot on iPhone 11 plus max. Does it have 4K? Yeah, it's in 4K. Are we 4K or are we 1080p? Uh, everybody right now is 4K. That's really delicious. Can you start the show now? No. Yep, nope. Absolutely. Let's start the show. That is a perfect introduction to my friend. Travis, the, make sure you stay nice and close on that mic. Yeah. You got it, sir. You I got, got it. In, I got in trouble one time, so now I just cupped the mic the entire time. Whoa, dude. It's like in my nose. I don't know, man. I just got it off. It was getting stuck in my chair. Fine, Chris. God. The show's falling apart. The All show right. is, let's start it over. All right. Ready, go. We're ready. And here we are. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The fittest data four in the entire world. That's right. Data four. I had, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put that one four. in there. Yeah. If someone asked me, it'd be like the fittest dad of two that works at training think tank that also doesn't compete in CrossFit. You just have to list out <laughs> exactly. everything that you Wait, accomplished. who's the other dad now? Saxon Panchik. He's and got two Claude little ones. He had kid. twins. And they're still really young. Small. Right? Yeah. Where did Scott he has a fifth. fifth. Scott has a daughter. Well, it's in the top. Do you know what, what's Scott's daughter's name? Is it Kinsley? You're I saw him the wrong person. Oh yeah. Well, the, the reason I said that for those that don't know, my daughter's name is Kinsley and I saw him post something that said, this is to you, Kinsley. So I'm guessing that has to be his daughter's name. I, I would know. assume. Yeah. Who knows? Either I don't that think or his like mistress. <laughs> okay. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's true. Travis, how are you feeling? My friend? I'm great. Body if, actually feels pretty good. I heard you talking to somebody in there that you were feeling good enough to train right now. I could, if I wanted yeah, to, you're not I going mean, to. I just, there's no point. Um, I feel like at this point in time, there's no point to get jump right back in. Like, I feel like you get more fired up like mentally after an event, but you have to be able to regulate that and calm back down because so there's true. no point to jump back in. Cause then you'll get three weeks into training and be like, I should have waited yeah. longer. It's all my clients. They watch the games and they're like, I'm so ready oh, to train. You're, ready. Right you're fired now. up. I mean, and I get it. It's a, it's an exciting time. Like yeah. the games happen. That's what we train for. That's the Olympics for us. And then to come back and then your body feel fine. It's like, oh, maybe I should. And then it's like, no, you really shouldn't. How does this year's games that just in general, how do you feel? How does it compare to past or previous games? As far as like my body feels good or my body's wrecked. Which one was the hardest? I guess it would be a better question there. I feel like the only thing that really made me sore was the final workout. Yeah. Just the high but, volume of chest bar. So not the lunge. I was thinking, no, man, that it just wasn't was far enough me. compared to what we've been doing. Yeah, so yeah. when you're like a hundred feet relative to that's what we do in a workout four times, that's what makes you really sore. Right. Um, but I think overall there was a good variety and the, the break on Thursday allowed us to kind of get back to almost a hundred percent. Like even, Wednesday on the kayak, like weird muscles were sore. Like my, just my right trap. I know Noah was saying that too. Yeah. Like nothing on my left side, just my right trap. I was like, well, this is strange. Um, what else do we do that day? The bar muscle ups, you couldn't do big enough sets to make you super sore. Cause you had to drop down at right. 12. So then that takes away some of the soreness. If it was like, you're doing 25 unbroken. Um, then the sprint, was just a sprint. I got sore and like deep in my adductors from that. Yeah. And then honestly, what hurt more was when we came around the corner where the, to go onto the field, there was part of the fence that stuck out and I nailed that with my shoulder. Oh no. It hurt <laughs> you so can bad. See it on, that was, it oh, you can you? see it. You can see it when, if you watch it, well, back. where we were standing, you couldn't see anything. No, but yeah. if you watched it on camera, cause I went back to watch and you just see me do that. Cause I <laughs> nailed this thing as I rounded the corner. That's what cost you those spots. <laughs> Two tenths <laughs> was know, eight, eight spots. spots. Uh, yeah. I remember looking at it. It's crazy. Which would have been that me was. hitting that stupid <laughs> fence. And so why that, did you hit the fence? Like you just, I just you didn't want to hugging the corner. Not you were trying to like squeeze in yeah, underneath just, everyone. You just didn't want to like not hit it. So you just hit it or, or I, you couldn't really tell. Like you knew like they all you just rounded wanted to the, get hurt for the rest yeah. of the weekend or, but that's what hurt me most on the <laughs> next day when I woke up, <laughs> I like, like my arm. I like pushed down and I was like, Oh man, that like there was like a huge knot from where I nailed it. But 
that and then what was the final? Oh, the wall walk. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> you know, what's funny about that is I, I tested that workout when I got back you? and my shoulders were sore for like four days. <laughs> I was just completely wrecked. Yeah. So you guys are a different breed. That's for sure. Yeah. If, I mean, it's just so you just, you laid there. Well, the yeah. thrusters <laughs> Some people were laying there. Panchik was not laying there. I, that was so impressive. It's how he did that. crazy how fast he went, but I, yeah, I just remember how was different like, was hold that on, hold on. from before you ask that question, want to circle back real quick. His original question was what year of the games made oh, you the most sore? Yeah. Um, if you can remember one of the Murph years, I remember you coming back and you were pretty yeah. sore. Everyone seems so wrecked. So I guess what 16. Yeah. Was it I like feel Murph like it varies. PT, yeah. Like a, bunch heavy, of, oh, yeah oh, a bunch of really heavy DT stuff. That, yeah. 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 So I think it's more the volume of reps that's what makes you super yeah. sore. Like the 90 chest bar where you kind of can do bigger sets when it's super dense, when there's like 90 yeah. reps in a row, where right? it's like when I do five pick flips, 48 muscle ups relative to we're doing that pretty normally on a workout then to five pick flips again, like that doesn't really make you sore. But if it was like you had a pick flip the whole football field, that would have been a completely different story yeah. of how your body would feel. And I think it's just how it compounds. But overall with the break on Thursday, body felt good, but I don't know. I really don't know. Like in the moment, I could be like, "Oh, that was the worst." But right. yeah, this year, I, excuse me. Wow, no co. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it was almost we prepared differently, and so the volume was just higher that I didn't feel like I got as affected by it as much. But because I feel like sometimes when I taper too much in the beginning or going into it, I'm wrecked because my body's yeah like been deloading for so long. Where when you're kept, not doing the same volume, yeah, we kept training pretty hard up till almost Wednesday. Yeah. Of when we started. And I feel like that almost helped make me feel better. I feel kind like, of like you normal. kind of always prepare well that way too, though. Like yeah. you don't like to taper off no. super aggressively. You rather have stuff each day kind of leading into I, the competition. Yeah. Even now looking back, I feel like I would have done more like yeah. coming in because right. I like to breathe heavy frequently, regardless if it's like pure CrossFit, but like my heart rate needs to be high. I just naturally feel more comfortable doing that where Noah loves to like he, he aggressive has a pretty taper. aggressive yeah. one relative to what I feel like even on, I guess Monday we went into the gym and we still did a double session and still breathing was high. Yeah. Do you think keeping that volume up helps you more mentally or like your actual physical body? I don't think it necessarily helps as much physically on my body, but I think mentally it makes me feel more comfortable with how I feel every single day. Like when I'm constantly breathing, it makes it's just that self-check. Yeah. Just, it just makes the workout feel better. What, even when we went from five workouts a day to two coming into it, I was like, man, I feel like I could do almost another one to stay on top of it because it just makes my breathing feel better. Like even when I run, I feel like that makes my breathing feel the most optimal kind of like going into an event. So like constantly running and staying on top of it. But so when I start running and feeling out of breath or something like early, I'm like, I should be doing more. So speaking of the events, if you had to look at all 15, which event do you feel like you exceeded your expectations? So you, you looked at it, you're like, oh, this is going to be a tough one. But then you felt like you executed really well. I don't think it was so much as tough was the handstand obstacle. Yeah. Uh, just something we've worked a lot on this year. And then being able to just like stay composed. Max was like drop down at every section and being able to just maintain that the whole time, not fall on one obstacle, stay composed and then turn around fairly quick for myself to come back and take like a fifth or something. I was kind of shocked. Yeah. So, or I guess a 10th or something, I forget overall, but in that event during that heat was yeah. that. And I think for me, that was kind of like a pretty good eye opener to like see the work of being on my hands. That's such a off. scary event too, because oh. one mistake could cost you a couple of places or blow you up. Yeah, or you I was can't like, kick back should up. I just go unbroken? And Max was like, no, <laughs> but I was like, when we tested a version of yeah. that, we did and it felt fine. Um, but I think it was the smart call breaking up. Could you feel your shoulders from the wall walk one in that? No, yeah, I think honestly, fine. when I kick down, it immediately blows my shoulders up. Yeah. So I almost feel like I'd rather just keep going as far as I can, but then you run the risk of like, you get far enough and then you if fall. If you actually red then, line. Yeah. yeah then you can't go back. That's what I was thinking after doing that wall walk workout. I was like, I would be, I couldn't do a snatch. I, I wouldn't be able to do the handstand walk. Yeah. Like I was completely wrecked. So yeah, the handstand or the handstand, the snatch felt weird when we had the one arm snatch. Yeah. Just with like how your body felt catching 
squatting, kind of everything felt strange. Would you prefer that style though? So like everyone's going, you get that 30 or 20 second window to start and then it goes up. Or would you just rather, Hey, you have three attempts, you have a 20 second window and it's just, you pick your load. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that's a good question. Yeah. Like I feel like it could go either way. Like in that environment, when it starts because of CBS and other things, you're waiting way longer. You're waiting yeah. like almost four and a half minutes. Like thankfully they had barbells to the side that you could snatch with to like keep the position feeling good, but you almost don't want to keep snatching. Cause then you're just going to keep fatiguing your pull to a degree. But I almost feel like I should have done like half Isabel or something at 225 <laughs> because anytime I'm like super warmed up and the snatch feels good. Yeah. But even in the back warming up, it just wasn't how it's been feeling here. And I don't know what that was, but I miss. I didn't miss anything in the back, but when I caught 260, it was like ass to grass. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh no. I was like, well, you better figure out something how to I pull. would say almost half the field though missed one attempt at the first bar at the 260. I missed bar. every single yeah. first say, attempt. Didn't you miss a good album and then have to read it? Yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> I think the I don't know if I missed 260 the first one. I don't think I missed no, 260. No, I think you hit it, but it was a little wobbly. Yeah. And then so I was like, okay, we got the first one out of the way. We're good. And then we go up to 270 and I miss and I was like, huh? So then I walk up, hit it, come back around 275, miss, come back, hit it. Then I was like, I just want to stop missing the first one because it just takes so much out of you by that point. Then came back around at 280 and I just think it was a little Ford and I, I won't pronounce placement. his name correctly. So I'm not even going to try, but the Brazilian, Yermo. yeah. How impressive was he watching him in person? When we were standing over there to the side, it was like me, Noah, Velner, Fikowski. We were all staying over there just watching. We were like, just let him keep going. Yeah. Because everybody wanted to see what he could actually hit. But uh, it didn't. Insane. His 260 didn't look any different than the 305. Well, as That's soon the as. the same guy who, when he was 17, did something crazy. Yeah. He snatched He's, like over 305 or something yeah. in the teenage division. Yeah. The, watching his 260 right away, I said he was going to yeah. win the event. He was the only one that actually he got clean pulls. And then the way his bottom position looked, there was no movement yeah. at all. It was just absolutely insane. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. So I would have liked to see what he could have. That's yeah. So, so would I for sure. What do you think he would hit? I mean, I at, at least another 10 pounds. Cause even the three Oh five, like, I mean, it didn't, it looked like uh, yeah. me snatching one thirty five. <laughs> yeah. It was super and I was impressive. Like, I mean, I feel pretty strong, but geez, this yeah. is like a whole nother level of strong. So, so going, going back to the events, if you looked at the events, which event, did you fail the most as far as you looked at it and you said, this one I'm going to crush. And then you didn't exceed your expectations by any means. Um, I feel like that almost happened on a couple of them. Yeah. To be honest. It always does to everyone yeah. though. Right. I mean, um, hmm, the most one that kind of backfired. Which one were you the most disappointed in? Which one were you the most frustrated in would be a better, oh, better question. The run clean. Yeah. Just the, for the myself, second one? the second version yeah. of it. Um, I took a chance with putting Reeboks on and it legitimately changed. The first round was fine because I powered. Yeah. So there was no like real bottom position I needed to catch in. So it never kind of occurred to me that it would change how I landed in the bottom. But even when I put them on, I wasn't a big fan, but I was like, I mean, it's 10 grand if you win this. Oh, for so sure. it's at what point are you like overall placement or just kind of take the chance and see what you can do for that event. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to try. And so then we did the run, came back in. And then even on the first one, when I like initial thought was like, all right, squat clean. I stepped forward like three steps yeah. as I stood up and it was an immediate like, oh no, like you better get tighter off the ground get into a different position come back around, hit the next one. So then what 340 was coming up and it just felt so different than how, I mean, we cleaned 370 here the other day before feel like <clears throat> coming off the floor, you felt more did, forward or just like your feet felt weren't. like my feet were moving inside the entire yeah. shoe. Like there yeah. was no stability to, for me, I'm not saying anything against Reeboks, whatever, like some people love well, them. You're just but, not used to them. Yeah. And then when I caught it like shot me out the back and I was like, well, that was weird, but it's a much softer shoe than what the Metcon is. And so I just wasn't used to that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's frustrating. I think I missed three times, then hit it, went and ran hard again to try to, yeah, make you up. were in what probably first or second, second at the time. Yeah. yeah. And then that's where you kind uh, yeah, of slowed down mode than me. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew like his strength was through the roof. Like for I sure. I've seen him clean and jerk four under five pounds. Yeah. So like I knew super strong, same thing. Like his clean's going to be fine. 
Then we came back for the 345 bar, missed again, then hit, then came back. And then, so then at that point, myself and Noah are going to the bar and I was like, we'll just take a chance and see if you can hit it, like go for it. And then ended up missing the 350 again and then hit it. And just that I knew was a workout I could have capitalized on, which I mean, I took a third on the first one. Yeah. And if you look at anybody else that took a top five on that, they kind of stayed there. Yeah. There's the a pretty high one, correlation, right? Sure. So it was close to the same. I took a 21st on the second yeah. one and that amount of points, 60 different points, 70 points difference from that to a fifth. So just little things like that, that kind of come back the rope climb one. I feel like I executed pretty well. Um, but yeah, the, the one I thought that going back to kind of what I thought you exceeded your expectations, not that you wouldn't do poorly in it or you would do per, poorly in it, but I just thought that the way that you pushed at the end was the last event. Like, I know that, you know, obviously you're trying to fight for a top 10 finish. Yeah. I don't know if you looked at the point spread, if you could even get there or not, but it was cool to watch you on the lunge at the end of that. And I don't know if you were like in your own space or if you knew how close like Panchik was at the yeah, end. Yeah, I knew where he was. Okay. <clears throat> I, that's, that was, was one the, the one questions. where you tripped at the end. You, it was like a little stutter oh, a little step stutter and then you jumped step. over. Yeah, yeah. Like my right <clears throat> arm, if you watch, started to buckle, but you wouldn't notice because the camera just focused on Scott the whole time. <laughs> even, <laughs> even though the whole time I was winning the event from the beginning uh, to the end. That is mind boggling actually. <laughs> well, how so that happens. I legitimately started in first. Yeah. You got the road first, first, right? And yeah. Then I you rode a 140. First. Yeah. And then I was already probably 12 reps ahead on the chest of arm. Leading, 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 leading. I think on the final bar, Scott hopped up first before I did. And then he technically advanced first. Then I grabbed the bar, started to catch him, started to catch him, and then passed him or whatever at the very end. And then I went back and watched the event, and not one time was I ever see on the where you are. Yeah, a, how do, I don't understand why at this far into it, they can't just do a wide <laughs> shot when there's two people going head to head. I feel like Agreed. it's not rocket science. You have one not. camera that is set up, and you just show everybody. And I've said this before, but what pisses me off is watching the 2020 games when they were out on the ranch doing the run, they did picture in picture. And I'm like, well, you just proved that you could do picture yeah. in picture live. Why can't you do it other times with a wide shot and then have yeah. the person that you want to focus on? Yeah. yeah. They, I mean, they have their preset storylines, right? So Scott was going to be that for that event, but I agree, you know, <clears throat> you're out there on the floor, so you can't even get as frustrated as the yeah. viewer <clears throat> because there are a ton of viewers that are tuning in to watch all of the people not, or maybe somebody does like one person, but then sometimes you don't even know what's the handstand push up yeah. workout was another perfect example of this. So like we couldn't see anything except for the one person that was in front. Yeah. So you don't know where the battles are because sometimes the person out in front is so you can far just ahead. Hear the crowd. Exactly. Like that's the only yeah. thing you can reference it to is like you hear the crowd and then you're like, Oh, oh they need to fix something with the camera. Yeah. Do they, I, cause I haven't watched a stream in a minute, but since the 2020, but like in that instance, when you went back and watched, did they, after the event was over show highlights of you? No. So they didn't even like do like a, yeah, see that. Doesn't no, they just, yeah. then when the next seat comes out, they're just like, Oh, Travis Mayer with the fastest time, whatever. Yeah. But so when you're in, in the moment like that and you know that he's right there, like you said, like what, what's going through your head? Are you thinking like, okay, I know that I'm half a step ahead and I got to make sure I get this next one. Are you starting to kind of then dial in what you need to do? Or are you just watching him? No, at that point you're just kind of, I feel like in your own lane, like I knew I was catching him on the lunges, just looking at the speed of how yeah. I was holding it. And I was like, all right, like just get the bar up and overhead and just try to speed up and don't step in between. And then hopefully you'll be a, like, I can tell we're, very close right now. So who's going to just lunge faster. And yeah. It was fun to see that kick at the end because yeah. he did, you were ahead and then he <clears throat> picked the bar up first on the overhead yeah. lunge and he got maybe a step or two steps ahead. And then you could, you were swinging through yeah. and he had a pause in between each step. So I think to me, that was probably like the most fun one to watch yeah, you cool. go in. <clears throat> What was your least favorite event? Not not that you didn't do well or you did well. What was just like, I didn't like the programming or I didn't like the event. I didn't like the setup. Uh, I would say the freestanding handstand hold or the wall walk. Yeah. I mean, the freestanding, there was too, way too much of a gray area and it was too subjective to the judge prior to the event that <clears throat> it's in their hands how I do. Yeah. Like if it was controlled enough or not controlled enough, like, that's that very was, subjective of like, if I kick up what you just gave me a rep for, I'm 99% sure I just did the same thing, but you said no rep again. That was my biggest complaint watching it because they were judging each person differently. And in a sport that matters so much and a sport that yeah. one rep matters so much, 
that really changes the game, especially with all of you who work. I mean, you're, yeah. you're training all year round. This is your livelihood. You're trying to make money off of it. So t to me, it's like, why are they not thinking about those things ahead of time and saying there has to be a very clear standard that the judge understands. Well, and the judge is getting briefed when we are. Exactly. Like they're all standing there finding out and then they're going over the briefing and you could see every athlete. It's like, this is so subjective to how this is actually going to go when we get on the floor. Yeah. The simplest thing would have been you do a handstand walk or you do, you can handstand walk into it, do a push up, walk a distance. That's it completes the rep or yeah. something like that. Like saying if I'm controlled enough for one second versus two seconds, how is that? What is There's the judge no got a timer and watching like, yeah. you, and it's tough because everybody's judge was different. And if you got a judge that was on your side, perfect. But I did the first six deadlift walked, did the handstand push up fairly comfortable and it was fine. Go to the next round. And I spent four minutes yeah. on 10 freestanding. And I, he's like, you weren't controlled enough or when you, well, come that's down. the thing. So then even if I came down and controlled, but then I fell forward, he said it wasn't controlled long enough. And so the rep doesn't count. And it's like, well, uh, when good reps and bad reps are the same, that's I think hard. the challenge for me, because you had some that looked exactly the same that he gave you and some that he didn't. And the same thing for a lot of the yeah. other athletes too. Some, some came down almost recklessly and they got good reps. And then some came down really neatly and they got no reps. So to me, the challenge of that is again, you're leaving it into the judge's hand. Who's volunteering. He's not getting paid. They yeah. don't and have any we, true certification. Is it true that this. they just learned that movement when y'all did? Yeah. 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 So they had, they didn't so we're like, like have in the experience back. judging no. it. They just That's, last second. Yeah, they announce Here's it. The, the judges literally come to the side. We're all sitting on the stairs. They brief it. And so you can even see the judges like, oh, like they know that that's, and most of the judges that judge us are all level one seminar staff. So they're all like in HQ doing stuff, which is fine. But some of them of course have stricter sure. yeah, kind of guidelines I mean, that than seems, others. Um, but like a, maybe a, like a good reason to maybe not do surprise events. Well, yeah. that or just create an easier standard. Like yeah. you do a handstand push up, you walk, walk a distance, then you do another one. There has to be a very black and white line or announce this gray. prior. Yeah. Or sorry, like, not, not surprise events, but surprise movements. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if you're going to announce this is going to be a movement versus that being the workout you're streaming on CBS. And then everybody like, look at these CrossFitters. Like none of them can do a handstand push up, And then you got the Olympics going on Yeah, people doing everything else. But like when you gave hints throughout leading up, you should be like, Hey, here's something that's probably going to come up at least so some people have a practice. You're not getting an upper hand. You don't know the workout, but at least everybody has a gauge to practice the standard of that. Like, Hey, if you know, you have to kick up, walk and then control, like you can practice that. And at least even if it's a couple days prior, at least get a little bit better at it than five minutes before we, like we literally had five minutes or 10 minutes to warm up a four Oh five deadlift and figure out freestanding handstands. Yeah. I think it would make the sport look better. Like you said too, like yeah. everyone's watching the Olympics and they're seeing like the best of the best, you know, the, this look at this 800 meter run or this yeah. 100 meter swim and how amazing they are. Ladies all of you are, yeah, yeah, all of you are so amazing, but then almost everyone got time capped in that event. And it's funny you said that because my sister-in-law said, this is not impressive. And yeah. I said, you don't understand how hard that is. And she's like, yeah, but everyone's falling. And yeah. I'm like, that's the, the epitome of disappointment for me in the sport because I want it to grow. And she has no clue and how hard it was. That. Exactly. It, whereas like something else, that, then everybody yeah. sees that. So looking back at that event, do you feel like you would do something differently? Would you want a, diff a new go at it? Or do you feel like it was just like, hey, I, I did everything that I could and the judging was, was I tough? I mean, I think I let my anger get a little bit the best of me yeah. after a certain point because- <clears throat> You, I didn't know what I was doing different than the other yeah. ones that he gave me. Were you trying to communicate that with him? At, were no, you asking like, hey, we what's had going full on? Conversations. Yeah. I, well, I saw you. I didn't know like what the conversation <laughs> so we was. Had full blown conversation. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> yeah. And then Boz came over at one point and he was like, your rep counts right, but you're on the wrong line. I was like, what does it matter? <laughs> like I'm still sitting here. And so then I had to go back like two lines or something. I was like, this just doesn't even make sense to me. Like of, of the confusion. But I legitimately was like having a conversation of like, well, what am I doing? More control. And I'm like, but where? <laughs> like I came down at what the, point. <laughs> what do I need to do? It's almost like he wanted my head to hit. And then slowly, Good. yeah, slowly lower your, your yeah, feet down. Yeah, and it was like head could hit, but boom. Then if your feet hit too fast, it was a no rep. Yeah. But I was like, yeah. Have you gone <laughs> back and watched the event to see what other people were doing? No. no. Don't, don't do I it. Just, <laughs> don't do man, it. Man, I came off the floor and was livid furious. Yeah, I bet. Um, 
So in general, and what I, do you think? Because at that point, I knew I, if I did well on that event, I could crack the top 10 and hopefully beat my best performance, which was the 10th prior. But then after that, I knew that that chance was gone. Like regardless, yeah. even if I won the final event, that chance of being inside the top 10 was gone. And it's just, fr I knew it at that point. So I was just more pissed off about that. Well, the difference there is like you put in the effort and you probably executed relatively well compared to the field, but there's just nothing that you can yeah. do. You're getting no reps and, it's just, and it is what it's it is. tough. Yeah. But in, so, I mean, I think now everybody's going to practice it. Yeah. Then you'll get better at it and figure it out. Then next it's going to come. You have to jump over a, a creek <laughs> I or something. I feel bad for you guys and the judges in that. In I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's that seems unfair. Like, like, hey, have all this pressure to judge this perfectly when you yeah, didn't even just, know what it was two seconds ago. Yeah. I mean, it's not his fault because, I mean, he, he's basing off whatever he interpreted as, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well, this is how I'm getting paid at the end of the day financially for my family. And yeah. Just, I don't know what I'm doing different. Could you imagine, like, if the in the NFL, all of a sudden in the Super Bowl, they're like, we're changing all the rules for these penalties, and the referees just learn it five minutes before the game? I mean, like, it would never happen that way. So it's just insane to me that they Welcome could do it in cross. Yeah, exactly. Speaking yeah. of the programming in general, like, what did you think of this year compared to the other years? Did you like how well rounded yeah. it was? Did I mean, like I think it was a good. Yeah, I think it was a good variety across the board. Like, it wasn't just. I mean, we. I think we did a lot of pulling, just relative, but. I feel like every year you have one body part that's hit a little bit more than the yeah, others for sure. Where this year, I feel like it was actually a pretty well-rounded, I feel like test and kind of, I feel like that's how you saw the major shift in the leaderboard throughout the whole weekend, because there wasn't just one specific short, yeah. fast light. And that kind of tailored just to that athlete where you had some heavy that really messed people up. You had some light and fast. Um, you had just pure sprinting specialists, but I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I actually think I, I saw some people <laughs> complaining about it and it's, it's all kind of depends on like the person that you're rooting for, right? If they do poorly yeah. in an event, you get frustrated. But in general, I think that there was like a pretty broad domain. And I think they did the right thing with the cuts. They gave people enough workouts to expose that. And if you didn't figure it out in nine events and move on up, then I think that was the right call is to let that go. And then that, event 10 was the right probably test to separate to like really see who can do it. And most of those people were close. So if they performed, they went, or if not, then you got cut, but then at least having it to where it was nine events to actually see versus yeah. three events. Oh, let's on a sprint cut cap everybody where yeah. I think they kind of learned that was not the best decision. For and sure. I mean, I think they came back with a much smarter approach and they probably had the right top 20 where a couple of years ago, that was definitely not the right yeah. call of how that ended up. For sure. So it, going back to the day before the games, when you're walking in, you're learning the, the actual event, what were your expectations for this year? Like, where did you want to be at the end of the weekend? I mean, on a podium spot, to be yeah. honest. Um, I mean, I think even looking back on the few that just were like ups and downs, those kind of dumb mistakes and little things of like 0.2 seconds or wearing shoes that I shouldn't have or not trained in. Like, even if you added five placements from here, 10 placements from here, like that automatically almost puts me in a top five. Yeah. Um, and so from that side of things, it's just like, okay, well that's just an execution mistake yeah. on my part. Um, but I think honestly, I think I, there's no doubt that I don't think I shouldn't have been standing there if I performed the way I knew how. Yeah. So, I mean, the first day I definitely didn't feel like myself. Like I remember even getting done with the first day and I just was like, that didn't feel like me. Uh, so then I had to talk with my mental performance coach and then we kind of reassessed things. And there was like things I forgot that I do every single day that I wasn't doing prior to events that just kind of kept me out of my own lane. And I was like all over the place more or less. And then Friday I kind of snapped out of it and then got back in. But by that point, you're five, four yeah. events already in and that's 400 points. And those points are precious. How do you point. handle that? How do you handle having a, I wouldn't say it was a bad first day, but you did put yourself in a hole compared to where you thought you would be yeah. on those events. So it you sucks. go, you go into Thursday, like I, I, how'd you sleep on or Thursday night, you know, or I yeah, guess Wednesday Thursday, night. Yeah. Wednesday night I was pretty tired. So you usually sleep yeah. pretty well. Okay. Um, but then, I mean, you just, you can't beat yourself up because you have to look at it as a whole. And what do you, you know, think in those so like, events that, 
Wednesday night, or what are you thinking before you go to bed? Like I think about something as silly as like, if I lose a workout in here to somebody, like I'm actually frustrated yeah. by it. So like, I know that at the biggest stage, like, are you wrestling with those things? Or are you trying to envision I mean, what you need to do? Yeah. So we had, I had like a reframe with the mental coach when I was done and it was, a, it's about like letting things go. Like it's done. Yeah. Like I can't control what just happened. It's done. So then the more I keep beating myself up about it, the more it's going to carry over to the next day and having that like internal fight back and forth just isn't beneficial of the use of energy, how I'm executing. Like, so when thoughts of like, Oh, do you deserve to be here? You're not good enough. Like all those things, you just kind of have to like push it to the side and then focus on what you can control. And that's going there, doing what you do every single day and coming back from that. But I think it's definitely a challenge for sure. Cause you're constantly fighting like the demons of every insecurity and little thing that yeah. you have. And they're not showing me on camera and all these different things that like slowly pop into your head to try to throw you off your game. Like almost like self-sabotage to a degree yeah. of, I just need to focus on me and what I can control. And right now that's event five, what's is coming up next. So then just put my energy and focus there. Was and there a t turning point for you? Was it that night or was it another time during the weekend where you're like, look, it doesn't matter where I place. I just need to focus on the next event and go out there and do my best. Yeah. I mean, I think it was probably that night when I kind of, the, after the first event on Friday, I was like, oh, there it was like, yeah. Okay. I'm kind I of got in my own routine. There it is. Like I just had to like snap myself out of it. Um, and then after the handstand one, I could tell, like I went back into like old ways and patterns and thought processing. And then I remember Lauren texted me and she was like, uh, God, what did she say? Um, something about like, you'll regret not like dwelling on this and like yeah. use your energy where it's well spent. And that's focusing on the next workout. There was one workout left. So she was like, you need to close it out with like the best foot. Ooh, that's a good framing. You're going to regret dwelling on this. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you don't, you don't want to be sitting there as angry as I was. Cause even Max came over to me and I was like, I like, I don't want to talk about it. Like I have nothing to say about like, I'm furious right now. And he's like, do you want to hug? And I said, no, get away. <laughs> Just like, I, I didn't want like, I feel like that's probably like one of the first times in a almost seven or eight months where I've had that kind of like that frustration. Anger, yeah. anger and frustration about an event or even just a workout in general. Which one are you talking about? The freestanding handstand oh, okay. push up one. Yeah. Um, just knowing like that chance of a top five or a top 10 is gone and it's very annoying. Was but that the, the biggest mental struggle struggle oh, of for the sure. weekend? Yeah. yeah. For me. Yeah. I was, I was ready to punch a hole in the wall. Kind of like I was, yeah. my old elementary school days were coming back. Like I was <laughs> fuming and I was like, no, this I know isn't. Those. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is just not way to spend your energy. And then I was like, just go out on the final one and just, yeah. Hey, you crushed it. And I think for me, it's just not trying to come up with a pace or a different thing. Like I don't do that when I'm in here. Like I just yeah. trust myself and execute. And I think that's just what I did. I was like, you know what? Just go 15s as far as you can. If you need a break, just drop down and break yeah. versus like, I'm going to do eight, seven, or I'm going to do 10, five. However, it was just like row hard. Cause I pulled a one forty, and I was like, just stay there. It doesn't matter. Like you're comfortable. You know, you can hang on there get to the pull-ups, just start going and lunges or lunges. Like you'll be fine. Like you're not going to fail a lunge. Um, just kind of keep going. And would you prefer of, more <laughs> events like that throughout yes, the weekend? Just like, yeah, so helps me not think. Yeah, about yeah exactly. Like I can go out there and just grind. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely more, I feel like that's your style. That's yeah. the games though. That's why I, feel yeah, like I like the sure. games and perform a little bit better there than like the traditional pure CrossFit. I'm like, give me all the random weird stuff. Yeah. You spoke about Lauren and this, I think would be probably the hardest thing for, it was hard for me just being there for the time that I was missing my family. How do you handle the week? Cause you're gone for how many days were you gone? Nine ten, days, 10 ten. days. How do you handle being away from them? And, and how do you lean on them for support? Like I know Lauren's obviously you're talking yeah. to her throughout the, the week. Uh, I'd say the kids the most, just cause it's like, it almost, when you go home from here, like they love you regardless. And yeah you're not sitting in a hotel room for hours on end by yourself. Right. So I was by myself in a hotel room. So like when I'd go back, it's very quiet. It's, it's different. Yeah. Um, so then just FaceTiming them frequently. Um, and, but the times were so different. So like they're an hour yeah. ahead, but like during the day when I could have some time or something, they would be at school or daycare. And it was Lauren's first week back to pre-planning. So then she's at work all day. So then even when I would talk to her, it's briefly at night, but then, by the time we're getting home from the venue, she's already in bed because then she's got to get up yeah. super early. So then it's just a, it was a hard balance of like, okay, when can we talk? When can we not talk? But then, yeah, I mean, just with the opportunities, knowing like 
they don't really care if I win or lose. Like they still love me regardless, but yeah. you still want to do well for them. And I think that's like the most things. powerful <laughs> thing to keep you moving too, yeah. right? Like, and probably I would assume year over year, that's your number one motivation to continue yeah. to do what you're doing. Yeah. Think for about sure. them long term and be able to kind of show them. I, I you know, this is going off topic because I love golf, but Tiger Woods <laughs> talks about this all the time. Like, yeah. the only reason I wanted to come back and win the Masters was so that my kids could watch, which yeah. is pretty pretty powerful for him. And you know, after all the injuries that he went through, so we had some questions from Instagram where people wanted to know <laughs> more IG? in competition questions. So the the one that a ton of people asked was like, "What's your nutrition from event to event during the games? Are you eating full meals? Are you just doing like carb shakes? What does it look like?" Well like a little bit about behind the scenes is we don't really know what time things are happening, where we're going and <laughs> yeah. what's also place. welcome to CrossFit. <laughs> so you would show up in the morning and they would say, bring everything you need for the rest of the day. You will not come back to the expo hall. So the expo hall was like where our like little locker room area was and where we would kind of store all your stuff. So they would say, give your coach your bag. So they would take whatever you needed for the Coliseum after like the North park area. So you would go to the North park, do a workout, hang out, wait till they could tell you you could leave. Then you would all walk to the Coliseum, do something else, stay at the Coliseum, do something else, stay at the Coliseum, <laughs> do something else. So whatever food you needed and all of that, like you had to bring anywhere and everywhere with you. So if you wanted to heat something up, too bad, too bad, because you don't, yeah. you can't. It's at the expo hall where we never went. Exactly. Um, so food for me was mainly shakes gummy bears, random like little snacks that you could just yeah, kind of like any sugars you could get. Cause then when you would finish the event they'd be like, all right, next events in 45 minutes, we got to go get briefed and then you'll be going up. So then the amount of time for me, I don't like eating that close to an event. So then I would just have a shake or a bar or something else in between. Um, and then as soon as I'd get home or back at night, then I would just eat everything I possibly could. Yeah. But I'm curious. I, I think you probably do this while you're training here, but that's kind of what your normal routine would be like anyhow to prep for that, right? Like you, you yeah. do your workouts, you drink a shake, you do another workout, you kind of here for that, that time yeah. of the day. If I know there was a long enough gap, I would. So I had frozen meals with me at, I think it was on Wednesday. And so like, Oh, perfect. I'll be able to heat them up in between the event. Cause we had like a 90 minute break at one point. I was like, this is perfect. And I was like, Oh, do we have somewhere to heat this up? They're like, no. And I was like, okay. So all my food <laughs> is just frozen, frozen chicken. Yeah. Like it's frozen <laughs> chicken and rice. So from that standpoint, I have nothing to actually consume at that point. So then the next day I went and bought a rotisserie chicken and then put it in Tupperware and then just took it. So I had it and was just eating cold chicken, which was fine. <laughs> Not but a fan. On Wednesday, like I didn't know that. And so it's just little things like that. that you just kind of, you can't get too caught up in it. It's the, the games world against yours. So you just got to be able to adapt and yeah. Do your hold. calories go up on games week? I've heard a few other people saying they just eat like crazy. What, what was Yeah. I mean, somebody? I didn't really track to be honest, uh, cause I knew I was going to be at a deficit to a degree throughout the day, just based off of the times we're supposed to be doing stuff. So as soon as I would just get back at night, I would eat. And then when I'd feel full, I'd eat some more, then I would wait, then I would eat again. So I'd almost have two meat dinners at night with snacking in between. And were it. you keeping it more clean or were you doing the Fraser snicker thing? <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I try to keep it a little cleaner to what I typically eat every single day here. Cause then I feel like you start doing that. And then you start messing with like GI issues and yeah. different things that I'm not used to. That's why with. I advocate the snicker all year round plan. <laughs> <laughs> the best plan there is. So in between events, obviously you don't know what's going on, but do you have like a, a normal recovery routine, like a cool down and then a warm back up? Or did you just kind of base that based on how you feel? Yeah. Based more off of the workouts, um, like the handstand push up or the handstand walk obstacle. Like there wasn't much of a cool down. It was just like, all right, well, that was it. It was, it was on my hands for a minute and a half, two yeah. minutes. So then from that standpoint, no, but then other events like the assault bike power snatch, there was like a good cool down. That one was like intense. to calm the body down, like hopping on a bike for 10 minutes, then some stretching and stuff. Hold on. Before you go any farther than that, what was your pace on the bike in the 21s, 15s? And so I held over seven, I think 50 on the first one. Then on the second one was right around, I want to say high fives. And then the final one, I don't even remember. You yeah. just kind of hop on and hope it keeps going. Yeah, man. It was like everyone was flying and then it just looked like going through just like mud. mud. The last yeah, that's, one, no one was moving people on the 15. Cause we were in the back. Yeah. So we watched the first heat and you could see when people hit the 15 crushed. I was like, you guys went out way too high. Yeah. Cause I knew going in, I was like, some people are going to push it like 1200 or something on the bike. Yep. That's going to backfire. Can't do it. And so I was like, just stick to your pace that, you know, 
And I think I hopped off like fourth or fifth. And I was like, well, all right. And then just hung on, did the power snatch. And then I was in second. And I was like, okay, well, clearly you're on like a good path. Did the second set. And then I could just tell it was like Brent and myself kind of like back and forth yeah. and who was there. And then those milliseconds of the end, I think myself and Chandler was half a second from so third close. to fourth. Yeah. Um, so that gives me a question. When you are in the back and you get to watch the heat before you, is that how much of a advantage is that? I don't really watch. I try not to because I just I I know what we're about to experience and go through. I feel like for certain but things for that one, like that. Yeah, that one I did because seconds on that is a big difference. Oh, and yeah. just kind of seeing how aggressive they were on the first bike. And I mean, you can look at time and see how long you're actually on there or whatnot, but knowing not to hold back just a little bit more on the 21 and then push it on the 15 and nine. Cause even if you got it up to 700 on the 15, you would have passed a ton of people. Everyone. That you worked. would have passed everyone. No one was at 700 on the, for the, for the entire yeah, 15. Yeah. Well, that was a thing too, is like Max texted me and said, what do you think would be a good average pace? And I said, well, if someone could hold average from start to finish 600 Watts, they'd probably win the event. Yeah. Meaning 600, you start at 600, you finish at 600 for each of those. Yeah. Because like I tested it out on the, the echo drop bike. off. The drop off is crazy. And the, when you start, when you get on the first five or 10 seconds, if you're not getting any cows there, you're losing a ton of time yeah. to someone that can ramp it up quickly. Yeah. That's, that's one of those events too, that like, it's fun to watch, but people don't realize how much pacing does go into it. Right. Yep. Like you can't go out at 1200 or you're no, gonna... but then you have to be unbroken exactly. on everything else. Yeah. And fast, it's fast cycle so rate. hard. It's yeah. It's yeah. interesting. Somebody wants to know, did you have a big cheat meal after the games were over? No, nothing, well, I mean, I nothing just, fun. I mean, we went to, just, uh, I, uh, what? just a regular old dinner. Place. Yeah. I just had like a burger and some nachos. That was just like, <laughs> yeah, like that that's was your normal, those, the normal weekend. Yeah. Meal. I mean, it wasn't, I've gone on the past where I've gone really far off the bandwagon and it is not fun. Yeah. So it's just coming like, back is so yeah, tough. It's like, man, just eat kind of how you normally do. You feel better that way. Uh, cause I, if you get all the dairy and different things that I don't typically eat and then I go have a bunch of ice cream and cheese and everything else, yeah, I don't feel good. So I'm like, it's kind of like, being hung over. It's like, yeah. what's the point of doing this every single time? Like you don't feel good. Oh, the it makes next me day. feel so like inflamed and like yeah. So sore. the next day I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just kind of eat fairly normal. And then I woke up and I felt fine, which is a much better feeling than not yeah. doing that. Yeah. But we did get pizza on the floor, which mm. is great. That is nice. What's the dynamic like speaking of going out on the floor with the other athletes? Like obviously you're friends with some of them. I'm sure you would enjoy to hang out with them either in the gym or outside of that but you're also competing against them. So yeah. like, how do you handle that dynamic during the games? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's an interesting balance of not getting, I don't want to say too close, but just like too comfortable hanging out and not knowing what you're actually there for. Um, Cause everybody just wants to, you're just talking and hanging out, like joking around. And then, but you also have to know that at the end of the day, I'm trying to win. And that's what you want to try to accomplish is doing that. So I just try to, keep the talking to a minimum and then yeah. like I'll chime in and carry on conversations as much as I want. But then when I feel like it's getting closer, everybody just kind of separates and goes yeah. and does their own thing. Do you feel um, like there are a few guys that like just won't talk or are uncomfortable talking and just want to kind of stay in their own lane or are there guys, everyone's kind of like, I feel like everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody kind of chats, but then for the most part, I feel like if you are wanting to be quiet, everybody just kind of like, as soon as you get back into the Coliseum, like everybody spreads out, you put your back somewhere, you just kind of go hang out by yourself more or less. But. Now, what about like, so you have your acquaintances, which is let's say most of the field, but then you have your actual homies, like in this instance, I guess, uh, no, you know, Will, Noah, Chandler. Chandler yeah. Will. So we all like, how does that go down? Yeah. So like when day? we got back, like you would all just kind of like sit there, hang out, chat and stuff. But then when you start warming up, then everybody just kind of, you know, that's like, all right, yeah, you go do your time. own thing. I'll go do my own thing. I'm going to warm up the way I want to. And you do yours. But then when it's done, you're just kind of like, all right, what's up? So you take those guys out. Is there another <laughs> guy that you root for that you like, Hey, I want to see him succeed. You can say no. I would say no. <laughs> I would say screw yeah, all you guys. I mean, <laughs> in the moment, no, uh, <laughs> I'm not really thinking about that. Uh, who would want to do well. What, what do you think about Madero's? I mean, he's a good kid. I mean, yeah, he just showed up and performed on everything. So, I mean, yeah, he did it. You know, it's, it, 
you can always, I think for myself, like look back, you're like, all right, well you beat him at granite games. You've beat him here. Like you've done these things. And it's like, clearly you have capabilities of doing this. He just is executing much better on game day and walked away with winning. So, yeah. I mean, like it's just being able to have that belief in yourself that like you can do it. Um, yeah, so, I think that's one of the, but he definitely did a good job. Cool I mean, thing. Put it now together is, all week. Look how deep the field is. And and maybe this is another question too. I know someone asked on Instagram about like, what was the differences without Frazier this year where like now everyone's trying to win because I, I think the last couple of years people were like, yeah, just probably going to win. I'm trying to get second place or whatever. Now, do you feel like it's even harder though to like, you can't make a mistake. You said you made a mistake in a couple of events and it cost you, you know, two tenths yeah. is eight places. <laughs> Do you feel like it's so deep now that you have to execute on every single? Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's like, if you look at the, at least for myself, the altering of placements was all over the place, Huge, but yeah. you also look at everybody else. Everybody else had some of those as well. And I think there wasn't one person that like, it wasn't like Tia, like she pretty much ran away with it from the beginning, right. like where the guy side was still fluctuating a lot throughout the entire event that you have to be on top of it for each a workout. Um, and I mean, he did that the best over the entire weekend. And I mean, you look, I think what, I think he won the final one. Yeah. That was his only win. That, he didn't win any, but yeah. it's just about being consistent, taking top fives, top tens all throughout the weekend. And at the end of the day, you're the one standing on top. So I don't think it's necessarily about being a home run hitter and having one event where you do well. And then the next four you do terrible and you just won the 10 grand or whatever, but being able to put it and piece it all together to where you are having those top five, top tens, and then walking away more in a better spot than you would. Yeah. I think over the next couple of years too, consistency is going to be more important than winning events because now as the field gets deeper and deeper, it's going to be harder yeah. to win. But if you can, I think you average sixth place across the 15 events, which yeah. is obviously super impressive, but you think about yourself, like that's very doable. You yeah. just have to execute on each one. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to is obviously I think event selection, like getting the yeah. right things, you know, but at the same time, it's just like making sure you don't have those little mistakes. Yeah. I mean that I feel like that's the case every year. Like yeah, it could always sure. like, for what's sure. the test actually going to be? And all right, well give me all the quarterfinal workouts again. You know, like yeah. that's suited a little bit more towards me and my kind of training and what I'm good at. I think it's a lot of that plays a role, but being able to do it multiple times and over the course of 15 events is, What's yeah. Speaking of Matt, if he hadn't retired, were these events good for him? I don't know. Well, I mean, enough. I'm pretty sure everything was good for him. I think they, do you think that. he would have slammed it out of the park? I mean, I'm not going to say yes or no. Cause we don't know, but I mean, he's, he showed that for five years that he could yeah. dominate on a lot of workouts. So I'm assuming he probably would have been doing pretty close to the same yeah. thing. Do you think that we'll see another, someone like that? <clears throat> or is there someone in the field right now that could be like a Frazier? No, no. Yeah. I don't think so either. I, I mean, I think it's just the, like you hear the talk about it and I think it's stupid that you're already trying to compare somebody to him where no one was as dominant as he was. And not even close clearly, yeah, Like there was a big separator, um, on certain events. Do I think people could sure. But overall across 15 events, do I think someone's going to be like him currently? No. Um, yeah. I mean, he, he was not only winning events, he was winning five or six or seven every yeah. single year. So half the events he Tia was won nine. Yeah, exactly. It's just incredible. Nine of 15 events. I, I would <laughs> tell me if you agree with this is a yes or no question. He is the most dominant CrossFitter of all time. Yes. Currently. Cause technically I feel like she's still going. Yeah. And I mean, she is, she not only wins, but she, she won by another couple hundred points this year. And yeah. And I think some of the events, what, the sink keeps what's going on <laughs> up and down, yeah, up like, and what's down, this thing doing? what she has been able to accomplish, I think is just super impressive. Yeah. And she already said she's coming back next year. So it's just going to be another win unless yeah, someone steps up. Yeah. Yeah. Super, Which super is good impressive. for her. I wonder when she would stop. I don't think she's just ready. She's ready to keep going. So looking back, someone wanted to know if you look back at these 15 events, what was the biggest weakness? <laughs> I think he's shaking the table, which shaking is shaking the, the stand. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know. It's fine. People that aren't watching won't be able to the, see what yeah, you're talking this about. Microphone I'm just going to keep bouncing doing it. up and down. <laughs> I want is to hit you in the face. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Looking back at the 15 events, Chris, what was the biggest limitation and how <laughs> yeah, I did not, I swear I didn't touch it. That <laughs> did you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> For the third time now. I'll just put my nose on. What was your biggest limitation this year? And we'll get to training in a little bit, but what will you do to clean up that limitation in future years? If you continue to compete? Yes, I'm still competing. Uh, I'm, 
Man, I feel like honestly, the biggest limitation for me is what happens between the years. Yeah. Like I don't think it's a physical movement or skill or something else. I think it's just like little things that I didn't execute well, or I'm not, not of like a capability of fitness, just like, all right, you should have pushed a little faster here, or you should have changed the pacing here, like that I'm capable of doing in the moment. I'd be interested in being know. able to having that mental side of figuring that out when it's time, when it's not. What are you going to do in the off season then to fix that? Have you talked to your performance coach, your mental performance coach? Uh, about we this? talked immediately after like the day, I guess Monday, um, after the event, just briefly to kind of like recap. And then we'll talk again next week, um, yeah. more so about how everything will kind of go and how to structure that. Um, but I think it's just continue to do what I have been. And it's not like I did terrible. Like I still took 12th overall. So it's not, like I had a horrible placement or something. It's just little things that added up to be a lot. And when it was, I had a small mistake. It was a major mistake on the leaderboard with like yeah. the points, because if it was one second you're talking eight places or something, right. When you're talking another mistake somewhere else was then seven places. Like those little mistakes where if I just executed on those workouts, the leaderboard could have changed way different for me, but it's being able to do that in the moment. That's when it matters. Like I could sit here and say, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But when you're not there and not in that environment, it's a completely different feel. So how do you get better at that? Are you going to try to compete in the off season? Are you going to try to change things while you're training in the gym? I think both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to try to do some more off season events and just put myself more in that environment as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's all you can do and just keep practicing doing the right things well and keep hammering it down. So what's the first event? Are you going to do rogue? Possibly. I think it's 12 weeks from now. Um, my brother just moved to Texas too. So nice. kind of rogues in Texas. Yeah. They move into Texas. In yeah. Texas. It's like a whole strong man. Where Dallas. Oh, nice. They think they announced the venue or something the other day. Sweet. I'll go to that. But I feel like that would be the next one. And then if anything, Dubai, and then by yeah. that point, then you're at the gate. Yeah. Or it's open like open again. season. Yeah. yeah for so, sure. I don't know. We'll kind of see overall. I mean, right now I'm just kind of enjoying some downtime of not doing anything. Like I feel good and feel like I could go train, but there's no point as yeah, right so now. Tell tell the audience what, what is your next like month look like, or what is your kind of deload time going to look like for you? Yeah. So, I mean, my kids are back in, well, oldest one's back in school and stuff. So I got to be home at certain points in time yeah. and things that normally would be a little more difficult during training time. I can, now just spend more time at home, do some things I want to do around the house. I like doing yard work and different things. So for me, I'll probably do some of that for the next like month and then start to get back into the kind of groove and swing of things. But right now, just enjoy the downtime when I actually have it. Cause you don't get it very often. Yeah. So when will you start training again? Like I ha have an actual structure. Have you and Max talked about this? No, we haven't talked at all about it. Um, I would probably say a few weeks from now, to where like slowly introduce some stuff back in and kind of get into a structure. But I think right now it's just, I mean, we're what four days yeah. out of the event that there's no like rush to get back into it where I think typically I like to go into it sooner, but I think it's just now with age, I've kind of understood just yeah. enjoy it's the okay downtime. Time. Yeah. It's good to enjoy these things like with your family we're going to try to maybe like during September, take a little vacation because nice. we haven't had that. I was going to say, when was the last time you've done that? That'd be like a while. actual yeah. vacation. Yeah. It's been, I, I since I, I can't years. remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> years. And it's harder with four kids. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's harder with easy four to kids to plan. And then typically like right now, my wife's a teacher. So then they start school when technically I'm off. So like this would be a yeah. great time to go on vacation, but just with our schedules, that doesn't line up. And that's kind of how it's been for the last 10 years. Right. Um, so then hopefully fall break, we'll go on a little vacation and I'll just accept that. Like I'm not training and going to yeah. go do some stuff with them and enjoy that. Um, cause they wanted to go to the beach this summer and it was kind of like, well, we can't right now. Like right in the middle of like, games. Yeah, prep. It's just, yeah. you can't when you're doing those things or at least, you know, that's gonna, where would be your dream vacation with the fam? Where's, where's that dream? I mean, I don't really have a, place. I just, I feel like getting away to the beach is just kind of relaxing enough as it is. And yeah, I agree with having that. Having fun. I mean, I don't just getting away. Yeah. I mean, where it's at, 
I don't really care. It's like the much. change of scenery is just yeah. okay. in general. All right, rich people who listen to this podcast <laughs> that have a uh, beach property in yeah. Florida Help or some other Come beach. Come on, give it to them. Yeah. Hook Trav up. Come on. Hook me up. Or maybe like a mountain house in Colorado, something like that. Yeah, no. just the beach is so relaxing. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, just, I'm hey, more of a mountain man myself. Yeah, yeah, just get, if someone gives it to you, I'm going. Yeah, yeah exactly. if someone gave you a house in the mountains. There has, to be, there has to be someone who listens someone, to this who knows help, you. Help, help. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, rich people, hook it up. <laughs> All right. Somebody asked if you had the opportunity to either podium every, or let, let me actually read it the right way. If someone told you beforehand that you would never step on the podium, but you'd have a long and healthy career in the sport, would you still do it? Yes. I'm still doing it right now. <laughs> what do you mean? That's been my career. Yeah, that's what I've been doing every single day. I mean, I have the goals of that and Hopefully that will line up and I'll be able to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Um, but I mean, yeah, having a long, healthy career versus like a one hit wonder where you just, you do well one time and then you're broken and can't do anything yeah. else. That's not. Well, that's like a thing. Yeah. I, I oh, feel like yeah. you're one of the very few you've been in it for what, how many years has that it been was, now? this was my seventh trip. S- yeah. Se- seven <clears throat> games appearance, but you've been doing CrossFit for what? Nine years, maybe something like yeah, that. 2011. Yeah. So 10, almost 10 years and you stayed basically healthy all the way through other than maybe like a little nagging injury here or there and at a high level, like finishing 12th. I know that that wasn't where you wanted to be, but still like, that's incredible, especially with four kids, you're running a business, you've got other things going on. You have future plans for your business. I'm sure with your family and all of that, you've still more kids though. (laughs) No, yeah. No, well, (laughs) no, uh, no. How how do we know? Uh, No. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that that is really, really impressive. There's only been a few that have done it, like maybe a pan chick who's been in it for a long time. And obviously he said he's retiring. So I do think that that is I'm going to keep it going for the dads. Yeah, exactly. Keep it going. Someone yelled that out to me when I was running by them. It was great. He's like, do it for the dads. I was like, (laughs) yeah, you you got it, man. (laughs) Thank you. Some fat guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, I don't know who he was, but I was like, oh, that's cool. Good for him, man. They pay attention. All right. So a, an aspire. Hiring CrossFit Games athlete asked for your biggest tip on how to get to the games. What would that be? Um, the biggest tip? What's the one piece of advice you would give them? Maybe not even like just anything that you would tell somebody that wants to make the games. <clears throat> Trust the process. I mean, it takes a while. It's not easy to get there every time and let alone to repeat it. Just enjoy the process as it's happening. Um, keep training hard. Find yourself a coach or someone that's going to put you in the right place for the right time to capitalize and do what you can do. Um, But yeah, I mean, you just, you got to stick with it. Like it's not, I feel like everybody's like, Oh, you make it to the games. Like that seems easy. Okay. Well back in 2010, that was easy because it was just like, you kind of just showed up at the ranch, but now it's like, no, this is like a full time job. You're training four to five times a day, having body work done multiple times a week all these different things go into it. Multiple coaches, you have the running coach, you have the swimming coach, you have the regular CrossFit coach, you have your weightlifting coach, you have your nutritionist, you have your sports psychologist. Like there's a lot more things that go into it now than just, Hey, go to the games. Um, so just have an understanding of that and be humble about it. Don't just walk into a CrossFit gym and say, I'm going to be a games athlete. Do you ever feel like you'll end up uh, kind of mentoring some of these young up and comers? I don't know. I feel like that'd be fun, but I'm not. That's You're still, still no, yeah, yeah, there's, that's still nowhere in my but I mean, thought like, process of, would that be a thing after, if you did retire that you would be interested in, or is that like, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be away. cool to, no, I don't think I would walk away from the sport because it's still, it's part of you now, part of like what I do, what I love doing and seeing people grow at it, even just from like my general population members is really cool. So I think from that side of things, if you can share it with the younger generation and they want to do it, then I think there's things to be taught about being smart training appropriately and ways that it will benefit you in the long run than necessarily, like we just said, being like a one hit wonder, you do it one time and then you're done versus yeah. Can you do this for 10 years? Right. And then at a high have, level. Yeah. Like, Speaking That's of that, you, you talk about trust the process and you and Max have been together basically that entire yeah. time. I would be interested. I, I obviously am kind of privy to some of those details, but just, I think <clears throat> other people would be interested in, what has that process been like with him? Because I know there have been ups and downs, oh, right? Yeah. I'm sure there are times <laughs> where you probably hated each other and yeah. then you love each other. And how has that transformed over the years into where it is now? Oh man. From when we first started, I think I was just the little skinny guy that he didn't think would qualify. And then he <laughs> found out I was pretty really good, good at fitness and happened to qualify. I mean, we've definitely had the ups and downs and 
just because I have a bad year doesn't dictate that it's his fault for programming. Like you have to take responsibility that you're the one putting in the work. You're the one doing everything, regardless if he did everything he possibly could. That's still on me. Yeah. Like I'm the one out on the floor. I'm the one performing like everything he did. As soon as we get there is gone. It doesn't matter anymore what he right. says or does. Like it's how I've taken everything we've learned over the years and then can put it into play. Um, but yeah, I mean, you still have, I think, when people don't do well, they blame the coach immediately to change coaches. Cause they think that's the automatic fix, but look at the mirror and you're the yeah. one that's that making those decisions. If you don't feel happy about it, then you should have a discussion and then work with the coach to fix that. Um, I think that's kind of annoying when they jump around from coach to coach and are yeah. blaming them for those mistakes where I think, well, the grass is rarely greener. Yeah. Sometimes it, it is. I mean, sometimes you just sometimes have the wrong it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it is very dead, uh, but yeah, I think, with Max, where, where, where been, is it now? Where, where is your relationship with him now? Like, what is it still coach athlete? Are you guys best friends? Yeah. Like, I mean, he's like a brother to me yeah. more or less. I mean, we kind of go everywhere together at the venue. Like it's just, that's yeah. He's, he's always, your guy. Yeah. Like he's always kind of there and someone I trust and rely on. And you have to have someone like that there. And I mean, for him, for me, that's him. And so I think at the end of the day, like, I believe in him and I believe in what we're doing and trying to accomplish. And I think he can be accomplished. Was he happy with how I did? I don't really know. We haven't talked <laughs> about it. I can probably say he wasn't that happy, but I mean, I think being okay with that and understanding like, okay, how can we fix that? How can we go back to the drawing board and get better and start to improve? Like even on the drive to the airport, we were already talking about ways to fix mental holdups and different things on how to do that, how to implement them and, but we can kind of go from there. So, so if you look back at the last year, you saw the events, you know where you placed, what things in your training would you change or what things are you going to change moving forward? And, and you don't have to get into a ton of detail because I know you guys haven't talked, but just in general, what are the things that you're like, man, I wish I would have done this. Mm. Freestanding handstand pushups <laughs> and pegboard. <laughs> I mean, it just, yeah. yeah the like, things that come out that you're not practicing as much. Yeah. I mean, little things that, I mean, you can't ever, that's hindsight. Like you can't ever predict yeah. what's going to happen. And I feel like as a coach, that's hard because there's 18,000 movements who thought a kayak was going to be in the games. No one right. who thought freestanding handstand pushups. So the walk was going to be like, who thought wall walks are coming back? Nobody. So, I mean like those little things that you don't do very often, but you just still have to believe in yourself as an athlete and kind of capitalize on. But I think for training going forward, I mean, I'll still stay on top of those things, but you also can't obsess about it because it may never come out again. Yeah. Like well, you may never see a kayak again. You may never see the wall a hard walk part of again, the sport. Yeah. but you have to look at the majority of things that actually come up and are happening. Like you're probably going to see an assault bike. You're probably going to see snatching. You'll probably see some cleans, like trying different variations now with like running into heavy cleans and fixing that, like those kind of little things. Would but, it be cooler if they gave you a pool of movements that could show up? And then if they don't show up, great. But at least you aren't getting surprised by something completely. And along with the judges, like we alluded to, um, would that be a kind of medium? I mean, I fix? think that's kind of, you have a major pool. We kind of pull from anyway. Yeah. But yeah. And to have then, it all out on the table like that. That I like, would answer yes to that like question. Movement, yeah. I mean, I guess yes, but I also think it is cool when they do introduce something new to see how people actually do adapt, which well, is be, kind of it, neat, technically in this scenario, it would be new to the pool of movements for that yeah. year whether they use it or not. So it could still be yeah. a surprise. Here's like I guess, the rule yeah. book and here are the list of yeah, movements. Then yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is All you, right. Come on, Dave. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Because I'm about to go rapid fire on them. <clears throat> I have two rapid fire questions. So can I start the rapid fire? Yeah, please? Yeah. We'll start do that. The and then we'll fire. pause for a second because I have one more question. That's non CrossFit related that someone asked that. All right. My <laughs> only two questions are, are these like your personal questions? Kind of. <laughs> um, you mentioned that Lauren had texted you throughout the weekend and said something. Is there, when people, te I assume you get lots of texts from people throughout the weekend. Yeah? You know, what's funny is I don't, you don't, because I think most people don't want to bother you, bother you yeah. or say anything. Oh, so like from the amount of well, like messages, I was going to ask, low. is there any time that someone has sent a message where it's been like, oh yeah, cool. I needed that. Or is it always just kind of like, thanks. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, there's definitely Blame. moments like before the snatch, I had a few people like, all right, here you go. Like this one was built for you, whatever. And then you just didn't capitalize on that. It's like, <laughs> oh, come on. You text him back, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you definitely get people that you like know, like they'll send you messages. But for the most part, I feel like everybody's kind of hush hush during the time because 
one, I probably don't even have my phone on me to see it. And two, it's just kind of like, all right, let him do his thing. Like, right. All right. So my other question, I need to know when you went back into the warm up area in between events, was Mal O'Brien doing another workout? <laughs> she <laughs> was not, too easy. <laughs> yeah, she was not. Uh, no, she crushed it though. I mean, she, she did. She's I mean, so impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, all the extra work she did here paid off clearly. The ball, yeah. Yeah, she the, freaking crushed. She's no, amazing. she did great, yeah. but no, she was not doing another workout. <laughs> It'd be funny <laughs> Man, if she that did that just to fuck funny. with everybody. <laughs> oh, God. She's, she's out. just out there doing another workout. Yeah. <laughs> man, could you imagine? She's just doing chest to bar, handstand push ups. Oh, man. Just get warmed up. <laughs> she flew on the ha- the wall walk thruster. Yeah, workout. I didn't see it. Like, <laughs> so we went impressive. back to the, uh, we were getting walked back when they were like going out onto the floor. And then I just remember like seeing pictures and her wall walk smashed it. Oh my goodness. The guys were just like laying on the ground. And some of the ladies, I think are just, they're better because their body yeah. weight or whatever. The wall walks, they're just going up and down the wall. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're out there. just laying. I would go like this and I take my arms out to the side and just like, Oh, come on. I wanted to take a picture of you. Yeah, <laughs> I was in a bad you, angle. <laughs> good. All right. Non CrossFit question. What are the meanings of the tattoos? You don't have to go through all of them, but this is a multiple people have asked this on Instagram. Uh, well, I mean, most of the you can take your shirt off if you want. Yeah, no, I'll keep it on. <laughs> the lions on the forearm are for my third child. The ones on the outside are for microphone, Lauren. Microphone. Lauren. The right arm is for Lawson. The left arm is for Thaxton. Hold on, hold on. You got to say what the right arm for Lawson was. What is it? Oh, lighthouse. Lighthouse. Okay. Lighthouse in a ship. In Probably the, hard to see on camera, but yeah. And because I always keep my shirt on. Oh, you can you can Google them. Um. Then the left one's for Boston, which is a compass and then a map and then the time he was born and different things throughout it. Then I have Bible verses on each inside of my arm, uh, my chest done, side done, back. I mean, yeah. What are you going to get for the daughter? It'll be the whole left arm. Any what idea you what you're getting? Uh, do I know 100% yet? No. Uh, I'm in the discussion with the guy to get it done. And then whenever I can get up to Canada. Is it the same guy that did? It's the yeah. same guy that did this one. So they've okay. all actually been different. And then after I got this done by him, that was the, I'm yeah. kind of sold. So then I'll be back with him yeah. for the next one. Camacho, that's for you, my dude. <laughs> all right, Chris, do you have any other rapid fire questions that you need to go through? Because we're about to get- No, I feel like you've hit a lot Get of hot them. up in here. Rapid okay. fire. Pew, 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 pew. All right, these are non-CrossFit questions, but we need to have a little bit of fun before we leave. The first question, Travis, there's a movie being made about the life of Travis Mayer, oh, aka Trevor man. Mayer. Who would play you? Some actor you don't know who and his name is. <laughs> Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh, just, he just, just kills everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one movie where his daughter gets- uh, Take it. Is it ta- Take oh, it. Come on. <laughs> Take so it one, awesome. two, and three. God, Take it three is one of the most hilarious movies ever made. Yeah, but I Take it one is awesome. I was yes. hoping you said yes. like, Denzel Washington or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he'd be cool. All right. Yeah. You versus Max CrossFit competition. One workout, three rounds for time, 400 meter run, 50 wall balls at 30 pounds, 20 deadlifts at 315 pounds. How much of a lead would you have to give Max? <laughs> to I was be honestly no, not sure where this question was going. And I was like, with those movements, there's no chance he could even be anywhere close. I thought this was about to be something he suggested. It was going to be like run 30 bench press at 275, something I couldn't do. Um, one round of that three rounds, oh. 400 meter run, 50 wall balls, 20 deadlifts. How much of a lead would Max get so that it's just competitive. a full round, a full round. So basically he's doing um, two leave rounds in the comments. Jack. If you want us to film this over the <laughs> summer, there's no <laughs> chance like not even he's going to cramp. He's not going to be able to. No, no way. I full would, round. I think is, I agree, Chris, we need to do it All for right. sure. Then All it right. is done. To be fair though, you have to make him agree to that. Cause there's no way he's going to agree to that. Th- he will. But this next question is also a question from him. From you, Max, you versus Max, a no holds barred wrestling match. No, I'm running away. <laughs> Who wins? <laughs> That's hey, let's go race motocross. Like, come on, like, there's no chance I stand. So he said he'll do the CrossFit competition if you do the wrestling match. I'll wrestle. Each, I'll just tap. Each is vers- worth a hundred points. The one I do is worth 101 points. Fair enough. All right. You decide to sell your business. You give up CrossFit and you just decide you're going to dive into politics. You're running for president. What's your campaign slogan? No, and who I'm is your VP? <laughs> I'm not answering any of that question. Next. <laughs> who, who's your VP at least? You. Oh, I appreciate that. All right. You spent what a- the fuck was that? <laughs> even? He's going to have a campaign slogan. You, everyone has to, You don't. right? Like uh, build back better. That was Joe Biden's campaign slogan. 
Mm. I feel like you would I have never a good even one. heard that. The best a man what? can get. <laughs> That's the Tra- Gillette. Travis That's the Gillette. Part of the Gillette campaign. Travis Mayer, the best a man can get. Best man. Seventy-two hour sweat protection All right. and nine ear tent. If you can oh, hang wait, out, no, Travis Mayer already has a campaign slogan. He's a dude and a hey, friend hey. to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> if you could hang out with one person, dead or alive, for one day, who would it be? I feel like I would always answer Kevin Hart. I feel like it would just oh, be fun man. to hang yeah, out with you him. And then he's, just, oh, have you ever got uh, COVID from Kevin Hart? Because I have. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> no, I was at a Kevin Hart show where in a room full of only like 20 people. And then oh, wait, that's where you that's got when it? I got it. Wow. It was the next day. I was like, I was is this a joke? I was like, I don't know where you're going. I was like, when did you hang out with Kevin Hart? So he, was doing is- a, he did a quick pop-up show where you only 20 people in a small room. When like was this, this? This size. This had to be pretty recent. Uh, no, this was whenever COVID popped. I mean, that's like pretty back recent. in February. Yeah. And then, uh, so the next day is when I got sick. And then he released a special sometime over the summer where he filmed it at his, his house. house. Yeah. And he says in the special, the time that he, cause he got COVID and he's talking about the timeline where he was sick and it lines up perfectly with when maybe, I was sick. So maybe you so I think gave me him and, COVID. Me, me and Kev shared the vid. That isn't, yeah. it's is funny how he always says that in that other one. He's like, yo, you got the vid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you spend a ton of time doing CrossFit. If you're not doing CrossFit, usually you're with your family. Correct. Outside of that, do you have a hobby that you will do? Or is there like a show? Do you like binge watch show? Something? No, I like woodworking stuff. Oh so yeah, I do you a lot of John yeah, Maloney. Yeah, I do a lot of that stuff. Man, don't let him fool you. I got him into that. Get out of here. <laughs> All oh, right, man, John. All right, the last you don't one. Watch any shows? You don't have one show that I like watch like all the time. No, but like that you have watched and liked. Yeah, you I mean, were watching definitely shows. Yeah. Like, there's definitely shows. Me and Lauren will watch at night, but it'll take us a year to get through an entire season, 20 listening. minutes where, uh, I don't, uh, God, what was it? there was a race car one you were telling me about. That was like on Netflix. Oh, the F1 drive. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. awesome. I've yeah, been meaning to cool. watch that. Um, yeah. you should watch that. Um, like an actual show. Never mind. Next question, please. I've tried yeah. to start watching game of Thrones just so you know. And how far did you make it? I'm, no, I'm still watching it. I don't know. Dude. He's still on the first episode. Yeah. It's, it's not bad. I'm, I'm like, I'm diving into it. No, but, but how it, many episodes are you in? Maybe third season. So like I've oh, watched, so I've you're, watched yeah, it. You're, you're in. Yeah, you're, you're in. acting yeah. like you were on like episode two. Or no, no, something. no. I like this was. It's been like five, six months now. But okay. it's just the one that they're ride so the high while you can because they're <laughs> well, about to rip out I'm your fucking about. heart. Everyone says it sucks. It. Anyhow, last real question, and then we'll talk Tell about us how your you future. really feel about that, Chris. Oh, I can get really passionate. Let's not even go into. So since wash. you decided not to dive into politics, you that's accurate. You then are voted as CrossFit's number one man. They fire Castro. The CEO's out. You now make all the decisions for the sport. What's the first thing that you would change <clears throat> for the sport? For the sport, not not the <clears throat> gyms, but the sport. Ooh, that's a good question. Don't creating don't, a way don't. for all the athletes to be compensated and paid fairly. Okay, for so being like there, a, like if it, I don't know. Who are those it, athletes? So is it just those in the game? No, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, an opportunities for the athletes to make more of a financial living. I believe it. If you take, if the demo team person's getting paid more than the oh, yeah. games athletes, there's a problem. Yeah. Right? That's the like, thing. I mean, I don't know anymore, but I mean, you can, I think there should be opportunities for the athletes to be compensated well versus I'm paying for my hotel. I'm paying for all my food. I'm paying for my flight. I'm paying to even compete there. Yeah. Do, like would that, you, would I you mean, mind just saying little things, around how much you spent this year on just like accommodations and everything oh, else? Uh, over 2000 roughly for a hotel. Then you have the flight, which was like 600 bucks. Then you had all the food and everything else. I, for 10 days, I don't even remember yeah, what that was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just say another grand. And then. Mm, so, I mean, you're looking cars at cars almost five, five grand, right? Yeah. Then a car was 800 to a thousand for the week. And because it was limited supply anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you're roughly around that point. So. Yeah, and it's in a town that's not built for like tourism. So everything's a little congested yeah. and expensive. Yeah. So from that side, I mean, yeah, five, but I mean, that's definitely not anywhere compared to the overseas athletes that oh, have yeah, come for, for 14 sure. days. Well, what's prior. the counter argument to your, your <laughs> position of saying, Hey, help us out. What, like, what would the pe- the naysayers, what would their argument against you be? I'm not really sure. I mean, so you get five, four, three, two, one for qualifying for, and the games, but then that money is 
automatically gone just to get there. Yeah. You use your money, I'm guessing, just to, to turn around and to, buy flights. Yeah. So like you're not you're not making a living unless you have sponsors or something else and you're at the top. So I think what you're saying is that the first change you would make at CEO is I mean, I think it would the now officially be, be the Dubai CrossFit Games. Yeah, I mean, they do a good job with compensating well, what everybody. about Rogue now? What do you think about their the, the plan that they have with like the yeah, Bitcoin? Yeah, the Bitcoin and stuff, I don't really know. Yeah, but- They're going to pay y'all in Bitcoin? It's I don't know. Like it's one, an option. It's one and a half million dollars or something like yeah. that. Do it. So, I mean, I think from that side of things, it's just treat them more like professional athletes and like the way we kind of do things. I mean, I think if you do well, you of course can make a lot Good of money, money. right? Yeah. Like- Look at Justin, he just walked away with $310,000. Like, and then if his contracts are set up right, then he's got performance bonuses and things like that. Um, but for the guys that are in the bottom, like they're still very fit, but you're not making anything for yeah. what it you're, was. You're paying basically to, to be there. To play. Yeah, yeah <clears throat> for sure. So I don't know. I think to be a professional athlete in whatever sport, like they're all getting paid regardless of how they do. Like you have your base and then when you start doing well, then you're compensated more. But is that because they're bringing in more eyeballs? Yeah, for sure. But I also feel like the sport at that point has not been allowed to grow that way. There's been a lot of uh, pulling down at some point in times and we're not going to stream it because we don't want to. And yeah, different things from Glassman side to now Eric, where he wants to kind of, it seems like build the games up and get more eyes on it, which ultimately helps CrossFit helps affiliates because then more people are able to see it and helps the athletes. Yeah. So I think, but, and this year, I mean, paying out each workout, I think Reebok stepping in and doing that payout for each workout is only helping the athletes. Yeah. Like, so you think we're in the right head? I think right you're headed in the right direction to be, yeah. I mean, in 10 more years, what's going to happen? I'm not sure, yeah. but I think they're definitely on the It is so right hard path. to remember that we are still super early yeah. in the sport. So infantile. Oh, <clears throat> this whole sport. So, I mean, I, I would love to see how much they're actually bringing in compared to, obviously it's like such a small amount compared to like, let's say the NBA, but then with the NBA, how much are they paying out to the athletes versus yeah. how much are like the GMs <clears throat> or the, the owners bringing keeping? In. Yeah. But, you know, you think about a bench player now in the NBA is making anywhere from five to $12 million a year. And that's without their performance bonuses. Yeah. A starter is twenty million minimum now for almost any good team. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, mean it's, it's a completely different sport. It's for a sure. completely different amount of money. But I'm saying at least some of the athletes compensated for being yeah. there and being present, like making us pay entrance fees to compete at the games if we just qualified through four different stages to get there. Then you have to pay for each stage too, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I you mean, didn't it, even get a prize for winning your thing, right? No. Was that the Every only other, one that didn't get a prize? Uh, yes. That's so stupid. No way. I won the whole thing in the world and then still nothing. I didn't know that. I thought there was something. You win the open, you get money. Yeah. You won the, um, I guess, semis, you got money. If you won the games, you get money. But the quarterfinals, quarter final, no you thank you. Money. Nothing. They saw it was you and were like, ah, we're not going to get that seems, any money. seems about right. <laughs> All right. You already answered this one. This is the last question. You are coming back. What's the long-term plan for you? Are you just taking it one year at a time? And then what's the goal for this next year? I mean- I still feel like I have a few more years in me. Like I'm not saying I'm going to be like, Oh, I'll get five more years or three more years. I don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot of those things are external things of family and kids getting into sports and different things. And can I dedicate as much time and energy into it? Then when that stuff starts to shift, then I'll have to reevaluate what my goal and game plan is. But right now, I mean, my plan is to keep going and not going to stop until I can hopefully accomplish what I want to accomplish in the sport. And that's standing on top of the podium. So that for me is what I'm going to keep working towards and finding ways to get better at. And hopefully we'll be there. Let's do it. Travis Mayer, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks guys. <laughs>